coming up, how to use Notion, five blocks that you may not have tried. Hi, it's Andy. I'm sure you've tried out Notion's basic blocks by now, things like headings, toggles, and basic tables. Well, today I'm gonna to share with you five more blocks that, although you may not have tried them, can actually be really, really useful and they can help you in your Notion workspace. If you've got any questions about these, then do drop them down into the comments below and I'll also add some timestamps into the description if you want to hop about. But other than that, let's get into it. So the first block that I'm going to introduce you today is the column block. So I'm sure you already know that to create columns, you just need to drag blocks next to each other. So let's just say that we've got block one, block two, and block three. So to make these into columns, we just go and grab the six dots. We'll drag it next to each other until the vertical line appears, let go, and you get a column. And again, we could grab this one, drag it to the left-hand side here, wait for the vertical line, and then we just go and drop it and you get the three columns. But this is a little bit fiddly. So another way that you can do it is if you just go and press forward slash and then col, C-O-L on your keyboard, here you can see we've got two, three, four, and five columns. So for example, if I select the four columns and just press return, we've now actually got four columns. Now they're not that easy to see. So again, if you can, if I hover here, we can see it's got right something. So I can just type one. And if we move across, we can see that we've got the six dots. So I can type two here. Again, here we can type three. And then here we can type four. So the forward slash col is an easier way to create columns rather than dragging things next to each other. Second on our list are quotes. With a quote, it's a way to go and just highlight some information. So if you press forward slash and then start to type quote and then return, the first thing is you can just go and put some text in here. So this is a quote. So you may not know this, but you can actually change the size of the quote. So this one's actually large. If I go into quote size and then click default, you can actually see that it shrinks a little bit. Uh, like a lot of our blocks as well, we can add some color. So I can go into here, color, and let's just give it a yellow background. And you can see that we've now got a rectangular yellow box with a vertical line on the left hand side. Or we can actually use this in terms of formatting. So in point one, I talked about columns. So again, let's just go and put in here three columns by using the col command. Now in the second column, if I go here and I add a quote, press return at the moment that's empty but we've still got the blank line now if i press return on my keyboard so i'm in the quote i press return it will just disappear so i'm going to undo that but if i press the shift key then i start to press return on the keyboard you'll see that we start to get a vertical line now this is one way of adding a little bit of structure to your pages so let's say that this middle column all we want is the vertical line and we're not actually going to put any text in here now i can drag the size of this column across and we've now got a column on the left column in the middle which is just a vertical line and then we've got a column on the right so this could be uh, some text and here we could just go and add in a picture or we could go and add in a table so for example forward slash table as you can see here and it's nicely separated now just with this vertical line so quote is great for actual quotes and uh, highlighting other information but you can also use it just to go and add some structure to your page the third block that we're going to look at is actually a code block. So if I go here and press forward slash and then code, we can just say here, add a code snippet and press return. So if you actually do do coding in here on the left hand side, you just need to choose your language. So it could be, for example, uh, Ruby. And then in here, go and add your text. So whatever it is. Now, I'm not a coder, um, but for each of these languages, it will go and highlight the various parts of your code in here. Then if you want to go and drop that into one of your development environments, you can just press copy and then paste it into whichever one that you use. But I also want to highlight the code block because it can be useful for anybody. Now, straight away, you can see that we've got a block here that's shaded. And if I go into the language again and just select plain text. So here we go. We've got some plain text and I can just put this is some text. Now it's in a different formatted font. If I don't hover over it, it's just got the background shading. So the code block, even if you don't code, can just be a very easy way for you to go and highlight some text. So you may want to just go and call out a certain amount of information. So uh, this is important. You don't know that it's a code block, but it's just a way of going and highlighting something. And again, imagine you want to go and copy some of this text into a different program. Sometimes copying it straight out of Notion can do some weird things. So instead, just go and type the text into here. It's plain text so there's no sort of formatting around it you can quickly click copy and then paste it so it could be an email template for example it could be going some text for a presentation but the code block is actually really really useful for, for presentation and entering in some text that has no formatting i really hope you're finding this video useful if you are do go and hit the thumbs up button it's free and it really helps with the youtube algorithm plus i release videos like this on a regular basis so to make sure you don't miss out on any future videos go and hit that subscribe button. But anyway, 
back to the video. Great, so what's next? Point number four, and this block is all about dates. So in here, you may not know that if you press the at symbol, you can go and tag people. So I can tag myself, uh, I can link to a page, but we can also go and add in a date and a time. But as well as pressing the at symbol, we can actually use our usual forward slash. So if you just press forward slash and then date, you can go inline, do you want to add a date or a reminder? So I'm just gonna press return. And from here, we get that same pop out. And let's just go and put in a date. So uh, let's put in the 23rd of the 8th, 2024 as an example. So we can just go and add that date click on it and it's added it in if I hover over it you can see that it's highlighting and then if I click on it we can go and change it so we could make it say the 30th for example so that's one thing so maybe you're going and creating some meeting minutes so you could go and type in some minutes add the date um, and then you can quickly go and add that on a regular basis and you can put these dates in lots of different places so let's imagine that we had a table so if I just go and press at and then let's again go and put the 23rd of the 8th 24 Cool, we've got a date, there we go, click on it. And now this is a date, we can hover over it, click on it like we did again. So once we've added dates, we can also go and attach reminders. So if I click on this August 23rd date, underneath you can see that we've got remind, at the moment it's set to none. So if I just click on that one, we can then say, do we want to go remind on the day of that event? So that would literally be 9 a.m. on the 23rd. Do we want to do it one day, two days, or a week beforehand? So if I just go and click on the day of event, cool, you can now see that it's now got a little clock. Just That just says that there's a reminder. Now, if I go and change this date and actually take it before today, so if, let's make this the 23rd of July, so that's Tuesday, you can see that it's now changed color, and that's because it's now overdue. So if I was to go and let's say set it for today, that's overdue, let's set it for tomorrow, and now it's gone back to blue because that is in the future, so it's not currently overdue. And what this will do is when it reaches that date at nine o'clock, it will go and put a little notification on the app here on the left hand side and it'll also go and pop up on the app if you've got it installed on a mobile device just to go and remind you but you can also go and do this for other people so as well as putting in a date we could go and tag in let's say i just tagged in my va so feline go and tag feline in so go and notify uh, her as well so it's a great way of staying in touch reminding people to do things throughout your notion workspace block five on blocks you may not have tried is actually a table of contents so if i go into this page you'll see at the moment that we've not got a lot of information in here so by the magic of editing, let me go and add some content. Great, so all I've done in here is this is a heading one. So if I go here, you can see it's a heading one. Then we've also got in here a heading two. So turn into this is a two. Uh, and we've also got heading three. And I'll show you why that's important at the moment. But imagine that we had a really, really long page here. We wanted to be able to quickly go and jump to the right part of this page. So at the very top, if you just press forward slash and then either write table or TO, you can go to a table of contents. So if I go and add this in, straight away you can see now we've got a table of contents. Each of these are links. And the structure of this table of contents is based on the type of headings that we've got. So the only heading one that we've got is this one. So here this is a heading one. So if I go table one, you can see we've got a little tick and that's at the very top. It's then indented with our heading one, two, three, and four, and then our subheadings. And if I click on these, it will take us to those certain parts. So if I jump to say heading four, we go down and it's an automatic uh, table of contents. And if I change any of these headings, so for example, if I say this is heading A rather than heading one, straight away you can see that it's now heading A, Let's just do one more. So subheading four, let's say that this is a uh, subheading uh, star. Go back to the top and you can see it's now subheading star and I can jump to it. So this is just one block so I can move it around. I can drag it and it's just one block so I can put it wherever I want. Uh, I can also go and delete it in one go. So literally let's just go and click delete but that's a way to create an automated table of contents. Now, I do want to add something further to this, as well as adding a table of contents in the page, Notion have recently released this other table of contents here on the right-hand side. So you'll see we've got these little dark lines on the left, on the right-hand side, and if I hover over those, that is also a floating table of contents. So I could go here, again, we've got links, and I could go to heading four, drop down, and it'll take us to it. So you may not necessarily need to use that block in the page if you don't want to. Instead, you can just use this on the right hand side. But what I would say, you can actually turn this off. So if you don't want this and you'd rather use one of the in-page ones, if you go to the top three dots on the right hand side, here you can see we've got table of contents toggle on. So just turn that off. It's no longer appearing on the right hand side and instead we could go and add our in-page one table of contents and we can use it here instead. So it's whichever works for you but it's just a great way to easily uh, access all of your various sections in a really long page and you could even go and tuck this away in a toggle. So let's go toggle list 
we could grab that block, go and put it inside, hide it, and then you could just call this, say, table of contents. So it doesn't take up a lot of room and you go and access it and jump to it whenever you need. And then you can just go back up to the start. So that's a table of contents. Now that you know how to use these additional blocks, why don't you try building a dashboard with them by following the video here?